Hello friends, Jim here with Science Talk. And I want to discuss with you something that appeared on fizz.org. Just recently uh, published June 9th of 2022. Marine predation intensifies in warmer waters could reshape ocean communities as the climate changes. Okay, let's see what they're talking about here. <laughs> Photo bombing, <laughs> yeah, that's a, a trigger fish. Um, tr trigger fish um, are predators. They like to eat uh, polyps and uh, the polyps in, in corals. So this one's doing it, giving you a little hi. How you doing? Anyway, so <laughs> I, I think it's kind of a fun, funny, cute little photo. Anyway, a hotter ocean is a hungrier ocean at least as far as fish predators are concerned. In a new field study published online in Science, scientists from the Smithsonian discovered predator, predator impact in the Atlantic and Pacific peak at higher temperatures. This, uh, the effects cascade down to uh, affect other uh, life in the ocean, other trophic levels, and that could uh, disrupt certain oceanic balances that have been in place for thousands of years. So Gail Ashton, who is the lead author of the report and the marine biologist with the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center, or CERC, said it's taken thousands of years to get to the state, and then suddenly we're ramping up the temperature at a much higher rate. And we don't really know the implications of that temperature increase. Past researchers has hinted that Predators are more active in the tropics since higher temperatures tend to increase animals' metabolism. But empirical evidence from smaller studies was conflicting, and few studies tried to nail down the central question of how prey communities respond to the increased pressure. And then you toss in warmer ocean, and how are things going to, how is this going to impact uh, basically food web uh, communities, the food chain? Uh, trophic interactions, etc. Warmer waters tend to favor animals high up in the food chain, which become more active and need more food. And it's their prey who pay for that increased activity, said co-author Emmett Duffy, who's the director of the Smithsonian's Marine Global Earth Observatory Network, Marine Geo. This suggests that warming seas could see big shifts in the life of sensitive seabed habitats. I will play this video at the end. Okay, so tracking predation from pole to pole. The new study took one of the largest views to date an international team led by the Sismonian and Temple University coordinated partners at 36 sites running along the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of the Americas. The sites span from Alaska in the north to Tierra de Fuego at the tip of South America. At each site, researchers performed the same three experiments on predators and prey. For the first experiment, they tracked overall predator activity using squid pops, which designed by Duffy and Marine Geo team, squid pops resemble cake pops at coffee shops. Okay. Scientists attach a piece of dried squid, a standard bait usable anywhere, to a steak and leave it underwater to attract fish. After one hour, they check to see how many of those things have been eaten. The results confirmed their hypothesis. At warmer sites, predation was more intense. In colder waters below 68 degrees Fahrenheit, predation dropped to near zero. This temperature threshold represents an ecological tipping point in these coastal marine ecosystems above which predation intensity Increases, said Amy Freestone, who's a co-author and associate professor of biology at Temple University. With climate change, more coastal waters will exceed this tipping point or warm even further, fundamentally changing how these ecosystems function. And here's a, uh, a diver named Nestor Ortiz, who is hanging out with an experiment there. 
So now the, the, the question is begged, what will a harder, hungrier ocean mean for the rest of life in the food web? So to try and answer that, they, they performed two other experiments. They looked at the stationary underwater invertebrates fish like to uh, eat, such as tunicates and bryozoans, to see how the predators would impact their growth and abundance. In one experiment, they watched the prey colonize and grow on underwater plastic panels for three months. Some had protective cages that kept the predators out, while others were left open and vulnerable. Final experiment, they put protective cages around all, <clears throat> excuse me, around all underwater prey for 10 weeks and then uncaged half the prey for two more weeks. In the hotter waters, predators more voracious appetites left outsized marks on the prey community. Total prey biomass dropped in the tropics when prey were left unprotected. But in the coldest zones, Leaving prey exposed or protected made almost no difference, suggesting predators did not pose much of a threat there. We knew from previous work in Panama that predation in the neotropic can be intense, said Mark Torchin, co-author of marine ecologist with the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama. However, working with our colleagues around the Americas allowed us to test the generality of this and to evaluate how the effects of predation change in cold environments. The kinds of prey organisms change with predator access as well. Predators like eating solitary bottle-shaped tunicates, they're called sea squirts, and uh, they're like a, a eurochordate, or eurochemicord, yeah, they're a eurochordate. So, these, so that's basically related to cor uh, chordata, which include uh, vertebrates. So those prey suffered major losses in the tropics when left unprotected. Meanwhile, encrusting bryomo uh, bryozoans, called moss animals, flourished in the newly free space as fish largely left them alone. So we see a community shift there. You prey down, you basically leave in habitats available and other organisms move in to exploit. This picture of Dr. Gail Ashton, she's looking at some marine invertebrates that was attached to a panel that had been, you know, part of the experiment. Solitary tunicates filter the water and offer nooks and crannies for other organisms to settle, two important functions that bryozoans do not do quite as well. But they offer just one example of how a rise in predator activity could alter ecosystems as cooler ecosystems heat up. As predation changes, some species will be winners and some will be losers, said co-author Greg Ruiz, head of CERC's Marine Invasions Research Lab. Some will be defended, others will be vulnerable, but we don't know exactly how that will play out. Meanwhile, what will happen at the equator where temperatures may rise even higher and what scientists can see today remains uh, unknowable at, at the moment. So that's, there's some questions there. We don't really know what might happen in the tropics because we don't have data for those, from those warmer temperatures, said Dr. Ashton. Okay, a couple of comments before sh uh, showing this video here. It is, well, it is being documented that as the oceans are warming, organisms are moving to higher latitudes and deeper waters. That was not addressed, at least in the synopsis of an article. So we need to, so that needs to be examined because yes, warmer wa uh, waters increases the uh, the metabolism, but also do you increase the metabolism to a point where all the energy consumed goes to just maintaining metabolism? In other words, will there be any energy left over to the development of gametes for reproductive purposes? If not, that could lead to decreased reproductive success which would then lead to decreased year class strength, and that could impact negatively those species. So that's something else that, I, in my view, needs to be addressed. You know, so you have the issue of organisms are moving to escape the warmer waters, trying to find the, the uh, water temperatures more likable, more preferable. So that includes going from 
equatorial regions to subtropical, subpolar regions on both hemispheres and to even deeper waters. So if you go deeper in the water columns, are, you, are they going to even in, encounter their preferred prey items or any prey items? So if they're not inc- encountering their prey items, that could adversely affect them as well. So it's quite possible that, yes, they're showing that uh, prey organisms uh, could be adversely affected. Okay, they're showing that. But what's the overall impact on the predators themselves for the reasons I just uh, outlined? So those are questions I, need, I think need to be addressed. You know, how, how does the uh, organism's migration patterns in response to the warming oceans impact you know, ecosystem, food chain, food webs, etc. How does that all be uh, impacted? What does the increased metabolism do for uh, reproduction, reproductive success, cohort strength, your class strength, etc. That to me, that to me needs to be uh, analyzed in context of all of this. But it's some interesting. Uh, findings there. Okay, so we'll close off this video with uh, taking a look at this. Now this is a basically looks like a what is that a chunk of coral with the polyps sticking out. Anyway, this is a trigger fish, and then they show a puffer fish later on. And puffer fish are called puffer fish because when they're uh, threatened, they blow themselves up. And there's also a, a group called spiny puffer fish where you have these like spikes sticking out of their skin when they blow up. Yeah, they're, they're fun. I've seen them. Okay, and I've seen trigger fish. Uh, in, in, I spent time in the West Indies lab uh, in St. Croix uh, studying marine ecosystems down there. Um, I did a a uh, parrotfish study uh, showing food preferences for parrotfish. Parrotfish actually chew on coral and grind it up and they to get the uh, uh, the polyps uh, that are found in the calyces of the coral. And, and when they defecate, it's like a stream of sand coming out their asses. <laughs> but, but they're a very pretty uh, a group of fish, very colorful. Anyway, I digress. So let's watch the video. Enjoy. There is no uh, audio for this, by the way. <laughs> really attacking it. And it is a puffer fish. Another one comes in. And I don't think you want to eat the uh, the cable there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, this is a this fun little video of some fish uh, chomping away there. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. It's kind of an interesting little study, but uh, I, I would like to see the issues that I uh, raised. I'd like to see if that's addressed, or if they have plans to address them or not. So, um, until next time. We'll talk soon.